Tony, what's up with the D Cherokee? D Cherokee, um, D Cherokee passed on. Um, that's the tragic part about, about the whole thing. Basically, we'd release 777 on um, July 7th, 2007. He came down to LA. He was living up in San Luis Obispo and um, came down for a couple weeks and tragically had taken his own life at the Amtrak station on July 21st, 2007. Um, he was the third singer in Raven's Cry. I still feel that he escaped his death. I still think he's alive. Um, D came in at a time when we needed someone in Raven's Cry in 2002. I'd still been just playing guitar. Um, D came in in 2002, summer of 2002. Got together with him out in the valley, San Fernando Valley here in Los Angeles. And um, played at a picnic table, just had played some acoustic guitar. It was real Floydy, real pop sense, nice thing. I, I hadn't been used to those type of singers and so sort of gave me a really nice um, sensibility of uh, a vocal uh, style that sort of was modern, post-grunge, grunge, but yet still had that classic 70s, whatever feel, um, you know, and then into like the Floyds of the 80s and, and, and that sort of thing, which, you know, they came out of the 70s anyway, so you had this sort of classic thing and this sort of like... Um, modern 90s thing and then um, and so that was really nice um, um, to have gotten with him so we got together just really was working out so he came in as the third singer of Raven's Cry and D Cherokee just um, had a lot of heart um, had some conditions that, um, that, that sort of brought him to um, a seizure on stage on April 26th, 2003, he joined in summer of 2002, so um, sadly enough that ended the time um, that he was able to stay in Raven's Cry and that's when I began singing, um, basically April 27, 2003, I'm still singing, um, and um, that's sort of where the, the concept Smile and Sing came from, you know what I'm saying, so just smile about it, <laughs> it's a good thing though, um, obviously it comes from the guitar though, guitar stance, so that's, that's why um, D. Cherokee was really special to me because um, he gave me a lot of inspiration vocally and as a person. Um, went on to start singing and um, also Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. I remember singing his band at the Roxy in 02 on the degradation trip. They really said, wow, you know, you can just sing and play guitar, so I did that. and. Um, and then uh, what was going on was um, there were all these really other cool swagger style bands that um, kind of had that rock front thing. Um, for instance, Ian Asbury. Um, really, really, really fell into the Alice in Chains thing in general. Just um, I like the vocal, vocal tonality of Wayne Staley. It was another tragic loss. I like D because he sort of had that Staley thing as well. Um, and obviously, um, you know, um, Axel's one of my favorite singers, just inspirationally, and, and Jim Morrison, that sort of thing. But uh, D sort of encompassed a lot and taught me a lot as a singer, and mostly from classic standpoint into the millennial sound, sort of, um, you know, um, the Stone Temple Pilots and some of those type of singers. So, really appreciated that. And was, he believed that the raven and the eagle could fly in harmony. And he was eagle feather and I'm totally raven, so we always have that thing, you know, so. And I believe he's right, we can fly in harmony. And um, we played, uh, it was neat because before his passing, when he came out on July 21st of 07, we were able to do keyboards, and so those made it on the mascara. Um, obviously, and that was really, really a beautiful thing. So, it's a song called Around, it's number three on mascara, and um, he's, he, you know, He's not around, but he's not underground either. And uh, we, we do fly in harmony, the eagle and the raven. So.